Italy is very well known as a tourism country. Rome, Florence, Venice, and Naples. These famous cities attract many people from all over the world. Hello, people. But what Italy has to offer is not only big cities. The real charm of Italy is hidden in its small rural towns. Cinque Terre is a string of five beautiful villages perched high on the Italian Riviera along the Mediterranean Sea, which until recently were linked only by mule tracks and accessible only by rail or water. It can be very crowded at peak times in the summer, but when I visited there in the shorter season during the pandemic, it was pretty quiet and perfect to enjoy the landscape. In this video, I'm gonna share my memorable experience there. The most common way to get to the Cinque Terre is by train. If you come from cities in the north such as Milan or Genoa, you need to go to Levanto, which is the northern gateway of Cinque Terre. I traveled northward from cities such as Florence and Rome, so I first had to take a train to a city called La Spezia. At La Spezia Central Station, you can transfer to Cinque Terre Express, which stops at each of the villages. These five towns are pretty close to each other, and it takes only a few minutes to reach each one on the train ride. Okay, let's start our Cinque Terre tour. I arrived the first village in Cinque Terre called Rio Maggiore. Rio Maggiore is the southernmost village of Cinque Terre. To get to the center of the town from the station, you need to walk through this sea inspired tunnel. It looks like this is the main street of this town. If you go to the small port of the city, you can enjoy the view of the village's colorful houses. It's said that the 19th century Italian artist Telemaco Signorini often stayed here and attracted the first wave of attention to the village through his paintings making it the first of the five to become a tourist destination. The five villages of Cinque Terre were built in the 11th century. Because of their isolated location, their traditional townscape still remain today. Especially the next village called Manarola has one of the most picturesque views in Cinque Terre. Just like the other villages, Manarola station is located along the sea. Near the station, you will find the main street of Manarola. The street is a little bigger than the one in Rio Maggiore, and there are some restaurants and souvenir shops. The townscape of the Manarola with the Mediterranean Sea is quite famous, and its image is often used on sightseeing guidebooks. If you want to take the same picture, once you reach the coast through the main street, find a trail on your right side and walk along the sea. If you turn back halfway down the trail, you can see the beautiful village of Manarola built on a cliff 70 meters above sea level. I'm so glad that it's nice weather today. Actually, it kept raining for the past three days and I was waiting for the rain to stop, but this is worth the wait. It was very cold this morning, but for now, it's pretty warm. Manarola is connected to Rio Maggiore by the most famous footpath in Cinque Terre called Lover's Lane, curved into the rocks above the sea. Unfortunately, it has been closed since September 2012 due to landslides, but it will reopen sometime in 2023, according to a plan presented by the Cinque Terre National Park. Corniglia is located in the middle of the Cinque Terre and lies on a small cape 100 meters above the sea. Among the five villages, it's the only town without access from the sea. Okay, so there is a bus to the observatory at the top, but I just missed the bus, which means I have to go up the stairs with like almost 400 steps. I can't see the end of the stairs. Corniglia is known as an ancient Roman village that has a long and rich agricultural tradition. It's probably the most genuine town of the five and with the least amount of tourists.
the village is very charming with very narrow alleys, so for those who are looking for a quiet place to stay in Cinque Terre, Cornigla is the right place. The small fishing village of Veronazza is probably the most characteristic of the Cinque Terre, and it's classified as one of the most beautiful villages in all of Italy. The main street, leading from the train station to the charming harbor, is arguably the biggest and the most lively among the five villages. I heard that in the peak season, this street is filled with way more tourists, but it's still worth the trouble considering the beautiful view and delicious seafood. If time allows, I recommend that you go up the stairs near the church on the harbor and walk on the Nover Cliff Trail. Okay, stairs again. There are some great viewpoints where you can experience a picturesque view. Okay, so apparently, this is the best viewpoint in Vernazza or in the whole area of Cinque Terre. Yeah, I'm so happy that I made it. If you plan a trip from the south to north like I did, Monterosso will be your last village. Once you get off the train, you'll find a beautiful beach right behind the station. Monterosso is the only village that has a real sandy beach, so if you want to spend time on the beach in the summer, this is the place for you. A visit to the beaches will also reveal the remains of the colossal giant statues of Neptune, who was sculpted in 1910, having withstood a test of time, war, and weather. Monterosso is divided in two parts by a small tunnel of about 100 meters. On the other side of the tunnel is a new part of the town, which has a great quantity and quality of hotels and restaurants. This is the Cinque Terre, hidden beautiful villages in the northwest of Italy. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see more travel vlogs like this, please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, bye!